Welcome to episode 194 of the Outdoor Biz Podcast with John LeCoke of Fish Pond, born and raised in Colorado. I believe achieving success in the outdoor biz is dependent upon embracing the outdoor lifestyle and learning from outdoor leaders that came before you. If you agree, then listen up for tips, advice, and hacks about growing or starting your career in the outdoor biz. My name is Rick Says. Welcome to the Outdoor Biz Podcast. We've relaunched our Patreon page for 2020 and would love your support. For less than the cost of a latte, you can show your love for the fantastic guests and interviews that have become part of the outdoor and adventure community over the past three years. Visit patreon.com slash the Outdoor Biz Podcast and give us a little sugar. On to the show. We're kicking off 2020 with all things fly fishing throughout January. Johnny LeCoque from Fish Pond kicks it off, followed by Mark Bale from Farbank, Tom Sadler from the Marine Fish Conservation Network, and we wrap up the month with Brian Cheney from Corkers. In this episode, Johnny and I talk about how Fish Pond came to life over 20 years ago, the great product and conservation work they do, the fly fishing retail biz, and much more. Hey, Johnny, welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy to be here and appreciate all what you're doing. Yeah, well, thank you. I'm glad, glad we found time to catch up. It's good seeing you at the uh, fly fishing show. I hadn't been to one of those in a while. And it was nice. It was, a, it was a fun show. You know, I never know how to gauge as far as the size of the show from one year over the next. But right. Obviously, a new change from uh, in being in Florida and in the middle of July. I think that the <laughs> timing of the show is always in question as far as the timing from an industry perspective. But yeah. it was well attended and uh, a lot of dealers uh, from around the country who are, aren't as busy during the guiding season um, uh, could come. So I think right. it, was a, it was a good move that way. But we, we loved being there. The energy was exciting and uh, as it always is. And um, just uh, it's it's fun to see the industry grow. Yeah, a lot of enthusiasm. So it's good. I, was, I hadn't been in a while, so it was good to catch up with a bunch of old friends and see you guys. And great for you guys in your backyard, Denver, right? That was short travel. It, it makes it easy <laughs> for once. Yeah. I mean, it seems like, you know, my whole life has been traveling. Right. So uh, it just feels kind of nice to be able to go home. And, you know, it's it was, this year was really convenient because we had this, you know, big trailer that we brought into the show. And Perfect. And we were able to leave it as part of our booth. And <laughs> we were in and out. And uh, it was it was really good. Nice. Awesome. That looked pretty cool. Um, yeah. So let's start with how you got introduced to the outdoors. How'd that come about? Yeah, the outdoors for me, and, you know, we were just talking about our fathers. And, you know, my yeah. dad, who's 93, has been one of the uh, big pieces of inspiration for me uh, from an out, outside outdoor perspective for my entire life. And and I think it's an important question, but I think, you know, obviously the, what is the outdoors and how you define that? And, yeah. Uh, you know, the outdoors is, is something for all of us a little bit different living here in Colorado and growing up in Colorado, you know, the outside world was very vast and broad and mm-hmm. uh, you know, from, you know, being outdoors and, and fishing and skiing and, and biking and all the things we did as a kid and, right. and into my adulthood. But um, you know, the outdoors is it's an interesting question because, you know, the outdoors for some people are parks uh, yeah. and I think in the urban parks. And I think outdoors is 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 a perspective and a frame of mind. And hopefully people can re- enjoy being outside and no matter what it is, it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be an extreme sport or, you know, fly fishing or whatever. But just being outside and appreciating nature uh, puts everybody in a good space, you know, yep. physically and mentally, which is really important. Yeah, no, that's well said. I think the outdoors you know, those of us that have been in the outdoor industry, I think, for, for many years, we've seen that definition evolve as we embrace a broader range of of constituency, right? It's more people that do, you know, early in the day, it was all about that extreme sports stuff. And now it's much more broad and, you know, hiking in the parks or even in your local park is, is outdoors. So it's, yeah. you're spot on. There. And, I, yeah. and I believe it's the, you know, the third largest economic sector Mm-hmm. in our country mm-hmm. um at 886 billion dollars and 7 million jobs right so the outdoors is not only you know it's, it's good for people to to appreciate and we we have you know all this public land and an open space for people to appreciate uh the outdoors and we're lucky as a country to be able to have those uh have that land uh so we can actually uh learn the, the, about the quality of, of what that does for our life yeah how it so, recharges um, us yeah. So the, yeah so the outdoors to me is just you know it is it's just everything. And to me, it's about light. It's about the beauty. It's about the habitat and the species that live there. And, and this curiosity to be able to see, um, this outside world, um, and especially through the lens of something like fly fishing mm-hmm, is, mm-hmm. is really spectacular because it puts you into places where there's beautiful water. Yeah. And when you have healthy water and habitat, you usually have healthy species and you have healthy, um, you know, um, it's just diversity, which is yeah. really important. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So speaking of fly fishing, Fist Pond was started over 20 years ago. What was the catalyst for starting that, launching the brand? 
you know, I, I had a business uh, in, in Boulder, which I started here in Colorado, called Case Logic. Uh, it was a music storage business, and we kind of launched that. And I was never really an audiophile. It was a business that, you know, had a lot of uh, consumers around the world that loved the product. We differentiated and, and really made a difference with that brand. But, uh, at, you know, in the last several years of the business, I was living in California. And when I saw Case Logic, I moved back to Colorado, and I wanted to, to kind of leverage the skill sets that I had learned uh, with case logic, uh, you know, from a manufacturing perspective, mm-hmm. uh, product design perspective. And I wanted to do something that was really more in tune with my, my lifestyle was all about and the passion that I, re- that I felt deeply. And that was fly fishing. Cool. So, you know, I moved to the Western slope of Colorado and, um, decided to launch, uh, fish pond. This is a fly fishing brand yeah. and differentiate with what we make. Nice job. Where'd you live in California? Where were you? In the Bay Area? In the Bay Area, okay. San Francisco. Yeah. That's what mm-hmm. I thought. Yeah, I remember Case Logic being there, yeah. So yeah. tell our listeners a little bit about Fish Pond. You've put together a nice collection of products over the years. Yeah. Fish Pond, I think, is, um, you know, you know how you start something is a little bit different than how it ends up being. <laughs> I think, you know, I was all, you know, we wanted to, we wanted to differentiate with product. I mean, mm-hmm. first and foremost, you know, from a product designer perspective, which I do at Fish Pond, I just love product design. I love differentiating in the marketplace and we took fish pond you know out of the gates in year one in year 2000 um with a lot of innovation and a lot of different color and Mm -hmm. uh bringing a difference to the to the market which fly fishing didn't really have at the time um yeah you guys were the first to splash color around that was pretty cool yeah yeah a lot of color and just features and drop down fly benches and things like that yeah um so fish pond has morphed into a brand that um is is about product innovation for sure. But I think what I'm most proud of uh, is that it is a brand that stands for something that's mm-hmm. much bigger than really what we make. And I think that's the foundation of where we're at right now with our business. We we make great product because we want to be relevant. We want to be authentic and we want to have a consumer base that believes in, and understands our product, but they're also with us from a value perspective and mm-hmm. how we treat our environment, how we look to the future uh, for being a participant in keeping our world sane and healthy and, and vibrant. Yeah, no, I, I you know give you guys kudos for that. You're one of the few B Corps in the outdoor industry. Am I surprised by that? What drove that decision? Well, we were the first fly fishing uh, business <clears throat> to be a, a, a B Corp. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's really not that many B Corps around the world, but there's just a, you know, it's a, it's a, it, it, you have to earn uh, your stripes to become a B Corp. It is a certification uh, that you uh, go through to make sure that you're, you know, treating your employees correctly. Mm-hmm. You've got sustainable plans, the way you're treating your recycling, your product, your manufacturing process, uh, how you work with your community, how your factories operate, et cetera. So it's a long litany of, uh, of you know, a string of, of, of processes that you have to go through to, to get this B Corp. But, you know, it just basically gave us a, a platform to work from. Mm-hmm. And, and it lines up with the values too, right? I mean, it's very value driven. It is. And I think it's, you know, it is, it's kind of this little stamp in a way Mm -hmm. that, that we're there. You have to go through this process every three years, I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you, you just can't sit back on your laurels, but you know, I think it, it, it sets a tone and it lets people understand that, you know, again, where we are from a, a, you know, kind of a thought process behind Mm -hmm. our brand is just as important as far as what we make. Yeah. And I'm always surprised how few there are in the outdoor recreation space. You think, what is, what are your thoughts on that? You think it's the, the requirements, the list of things you have to do every three years? Why do you think it's complex? That? Is it? Yeah, yeah it yeah. is complex. Yeah. I think <clears throat> because it's, you know, you have to go through this process and it's not easy. And yeah. <clears throat> Ben Kurtz, my uh, equal business partner in the business, uh, did most of this for us. You know, he set out and worked with uh, the B Corp people and, it was arduous and, you know, and we've had to go through uh, it a second time to be recertified oh, wow. as a B Corp. Mm-hmm. So I think, and a lot of companies just don't deserve it. Mm-hmm. So I think, mm-hmm. you know, we, 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 I think we feel like we deserve it. I wish there was a lot more companies who could meet the criteria. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think there can be, and, and B Corps don't just apply to outdoor companies. They can apply to No, yeah, companies. yeah. There's a, it's a, interesting when you look at them up and look at the list. There's some pretty interesting companies that are on that list. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, you know, what I love is that, you know, companies in the outdoor space or any company that sets a value system um, around their employees and around Mm -hmm. the kind of, you know, sustainable aspect, it, you know, it makes all companies across the world look up and say, hey, 
these consumers are aligning with those companies that are really trying to make a difference. Yeah. We have to make great products, but if they're also a really great company, yeah. you know, we may go that way. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I think it's it's a plus for us, and we're really happy to be a part of that. And it's really a community, which we're a part of, which yeah. we love. Well, kudos for putting that flag in the ground. I admire that a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, so what's your perspective on the state of the fly fishing biz? We just got wrapped up with the show. It seems like a lot <laughs> yeah, of energy and inter interesting things going on at the show. You know, it remains to be a small industry. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes yeah. after 20 years in this market, we realize that it's, uh, it's, it's growing, but not by leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's, uh, compared to a lot of other sports or industries, but I love that. And I think in a, in a way it's kind of nice because if, if we, had you know if we tripled the the fly fishing market our <laughs> access to water and the way we fish would change drastically yeah yeah, yeah. when well, so, you can be yeah, deliberate about that. how you how you react to that too yeah but i think that the, the fly fishing industry i think what what's happened over 20 years is that we've because of gear because of technology because of innovation people have enjoyed the products and so you, it's attracted a younger generation mm -hmm. um that loves the lifestyle um i think you know from the branding and the marketing and the way we approach uh, the sport is any outdoor sport, uh, you know, we're part of the outdoor, uh, retailer, uh, shows now, mm -hmm. not just the fly fishing shows because we are truly an outdoor brand. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, fly fishing is up there with, with any of the outdoor sports. Yep. So, and, and I think there's a the beauty to it. There's people who embrace it from advertising and all sorts of ways in their, uh, collateral material, uh, about the beauty and the grace of fly fishing. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're happy to be there. It's growing. Uh, I think we're, we're, growing this, you know, in a very smart way. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in our perspective, we're keeping it to our dealer network, uh, we're keeping it uh, organic and not strained from who we are. Mm -hmm. We make uh, great outdoor gear and fly fishing products, but we're not trying to be something that we're not by really kind of, you know, using the brand to go into areas where we may not, we may not have the mm -hmm. permission really to go. Right, right. So I think that keeps us pure. Yeah, it does. That's, that's smart too. Yeah. And fly fishing retails under the same pressure retails everywhere are under, how are they responding? E-commerce and lack of traffic and all the things. Well, I think across the board, brick and mortar retail is struggling. Yeah. Um, you know, people are more accustomed to buying their product online uh, we have a lot of people that we sell to as all outdoor brands into the uh, e-commerce market. Um, so, and we've supported that. Um, we sell very little of our product, you know, uh, through our own channels, through our own uh, website. Mm -hmm. um, it's there. Just a couple of years ago, we initiated that. We've held off for a long, long, long time. Um, but we do give people the first option to go to one of the dealers or a preferred dealer uh, before they ever buy from us. So mm -hmm. we really support our dealer network. Uh but I think the, the state of the fly fishing industry, brick and mortar from a retail perspective, is a little scary. Um, because <laughs> retail in general. People, yeah. yeah, just retail in general. <laughs> yeah. It's not just specific to the first fly fishing market. Yeah. But, I, but I think it's always going to be there because uh, for us in the fly fishing world, because there's a way that people go to a, a fly shop, even though they could buy the same product online, there's something that they, they get from the experience of being uh, at a dealer, yeah, uh, yeah. from, from direct knowledge of water, just the, just the feeling and vibe. Yeah. And I think, you know, it is, it, you know, fishing is a lot more than being on the water. As you know, it's a lot about mm -hmm. the gear and the talking about fishing and sharing images of fishing and, uh, and being in a fly shop is really a strong part of the fishing experience, picking yeah. out your flies and, you know, all that kind of thing. I think there's a beauty and I love that. Well, it's, you know, good buddy and I, we go fishing a lot and, out of, out of town. Now, obviously, it was great fishing here in Bishop, but we go out, to, you know, we go up to Reading and whatnot. And the first thing we do is stop in the local fly shop because you get the local knowledge. And the local knowledge, you could, you might have been there six months before, but it changes. It's different. And you get the, you know, you know what the bugs are working, you know what the weather's going to do, it's, you know, what the water levels might be depending on the time of year. It's just that local knowledge that the you get out of the fly shop. It's huge. I, I wouldn't go anywhere absolutely. without it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, we talked a little bit about the show. Any new initiatives you guys rolled out or something you can talk about that came out of the show or before the show? Well, I think importantly, as we grow as a brand and we're trying to grow organically and stay within uh, our core, but, you know, sometimes we look at things that we're missing in our line. And mm -hmm. the one thing that we, we knew that we were missing was fly storage and a really you know, mm -hmm. top-notch fly storage. And so for years, we've been thinking about how we innovate within that market. And we, we got a phone call from the guys who, 
who own the tacky brand, who are really the authentic originator of the silicon, you know, slit technology, uh, which has won, you know, many best of shows at the fly fishing retailers mm-hmm, over the years. Mm-hmm. These guys are, you know, really outstanding yeah. individuals, which I loved. And so they asked us if we were wanted to collaborate, do some things together. And they loved our brand and what we could do and maybe kind of, you know, hit some things that they couldn't do very efficiently on their own with sales reps and uh, some of the innovation. Mm-hmm. So we, 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 we purchased the tacky brand uh, from these guys. They're mm-hmm. still with us. They're, they're collaborators uh, in all ways uh, from an innovation standpoint. I mean, they are the, the authentic true heroes of the tacky brand. And so through them now we have, you know, much better distribution, uh, you know, we're working together. Uh, so fish pond, I mean, tacky now is under the fish pond uh, umbrella. Okay. Uh, and we're really proud of that. And we're going to keep innovating in the fly storage market. And, you know, frankly, we want to own that market. Um, yeah, cool. I think we're going to just keep innovating and embracing that and, and making that user experience for, uh, storage um, is that that much better? Always an issue. There's always there's always not enough room for all the flies. <laughs> exactly. Is that the truth? <laughs> um, do you still get out and fish much? I do. Good all the for time. you. And oh, I, awesome. you know, I live on the western slope of Colorado. Yeah. Got, so yeah. Uh, and fish pond was born in, at, at my place. I live on a ranch, uh, you know, about thirty miles from the nearest town. So Perfect. we have water on my property, and I've got fish, and I can go out and fish every evening for four or five casts and come back home and i've oh, that's perfect. a fishing day sometimes but that's great i do and i love it yeah good for you do you have a favorite type of fishing do you get into the salt much or mostly you know i uh compared to all the people <laughs> i mean, it's pretty it's, it's, it, with a little humility i gotta say you know i'm pretty much a trout bum okay and, that's right you know, I, I i i you know the backyard of my world i loved, I loved yeah you know, it sounds beautiful and, why leave and I, right and, and i just always love it but you know obviously i fish the salt and we do our annual salt trips and bone mm-hmm, fish and mm-hmm. uh fishing outside of, of of our borders you know for salmon and things like that but sure. i always come back to the purity of really how i started in fishing and for me um, you know, what's in my own backyard. Yeah, it's yeah. like everybody else's own backyard. You, that's kind of your core of what you Same. do. That's right out of Bishop right here in the Owens Valley. It's what, you know, got some great places in the backyard. You can go out for an afternoon or all day or it's, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's just, it brings you that, that sense of, of, uh, of purpose when you, when you can just go out for a few hours even. So yep. anyhow, so that's me. I, uh, I get out and I love to fish and it's obviously a very large part of my life in, in many aspects from a creative aspect and right, art right. aspect and all those things. So uh, I love it. And it doesn't matter how many times you go to the same spot. It's always challenging. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's very true. Yeah. I've always admired your photo work. Do you still get time for that? I do. Oh, you know, good. As you know, that's been my main career for, yeah. you know, last, you know, you know, 40 years really uh, from a commercial advertising perspective. And I, you know, I think Fish Pond would not be the same if I didn't create all the branding images and mm-hmm. have that opportunity to go out. And to me, that's fishing as well. I mean, I go out on all these beautiful uh, excursions with people and we're shooting images for our brand. And even though I'm sometimes just shooting images and not fishing, it's it's a fishing trip. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and I love to, to get that. I love to capture that beauty. And so photography for me is, is a very core part of my life. It always will be. Um, and um, it's always been a part of my career. But being able to translate those skills into fish pond over the last 20 years has been really satisfying and, yeah. uh, and it gets me to, to, to some amazing places and to translate <laughs> the brand in a way that I feel great. That's beautiful. Have you made the switch to digital? I have. I was kind of one of the last holdouts. <laughs> I, <laughs> may know, the, I, I may be the last, this, you know, I may be the last holdout. Stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, that kind of, is kind of old school, but obviously yeah. then you just kind of switch the, switch the, uh, flip the switch and then you're there and, yeah. and then it's hard to go back right with the ease of digital i'm not the there yet yeah <laughs> it's just it's crazy but i still shoot film sometimes and i love that as well yeah cool yeah what other outdoor activities do you participate in well i think you know living uh in the mountains living on this ranch property that i have uh outdoor activities for me sometimes means work it's moving mm. rock it's yep. you know it's digging ditches and moving water and all yep. those kind of yep. things which i love uh, but from a sport perspective, I, you know, it, it changes by the season. And now that Colorado is, you know, is getting a lot of snow. We've had four you know, significant snowfalls in October here wow. uh, in Colorado. So, you know, and just this last uh, Sunday, I skied for the first time this season. Jeez, just, we've got nothing, even though it was just man. kind of skinning up out of sight of my house, Good for you. up the trail, it was, I was getting out. So I love snow. I love skiing. I love biking. I love, uh, you know, a lot of things, but, um, all of it still remains yeah. to be the, uh, the most important. 
Very cool. Yeah, we have no moisture here yet. Typical California fall, but it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get it. Oh, yeah, it'll come. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, always does. Yep. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions or advice for folks wanting to get into the outdoor biz? Or maybe if they're already in, you know, advance their career? Yeah, I think, <clears throat> I think you know, people to get into this industry, you have to have more than anything, you just have that passion for being outside. Mm-hmm. And, and from a business perspective, you know, it depends on what level of business you want to get into as far as being in the outdoors. Did you mean from a business perspective or just getting into the outdoors as far as participating? You know, well, either one. I mean, I think it's, you know, I, I kind of leave it open-ended to, to let you guys dictate how you want to go, but whether they want to get into to the, uh, you know, as a career, if they want to grow their career, if they just want to, I was talking to somebody today who's got a young son who just loves outdoors and wants to do more of it. Maybe they just want to do more of it, you know, just be yeah. outside. Yeah. Yeah. And I think people are being, uh, you know, introduce more to the outdoors because of friends mm-hmm. jobs are creating, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, we have places now where job centers are being, uh, being placed like here in Colorado from, yeah. from Google or, you know, big business are moving right. to places where outdoor recreation is a part of people's lifestyle. Yeah. And that's where people want to go. And then, and where you have an outdoor recreation lifestyle, economies are p- improving Booming. places yeah. that don't really push, uh, uh, outdoor rec uh, in, in our parts of the country. They're not, thriving yeah so you know jobs are moving and companies are moving to places where people want to be uh and and have a a healthy lifestyle outside of work yeah yeah. so i think you know and i love the idea of people more and more people embracing being outside because if we have the more people we have who love being outside and love you know the the aspects of what nature means those people also want to help save it yeah so the the advocates for our outdoor world is growing Mm -hmm. it's younger it's more passionate. Yeah. Uh, people are, are familiar now with what you know, what the changing climate's doing mm-hmm. to, for a lot of opportunities. We see it, especially you know, now what you guys are seeing in California in the oh last couple goodness. of weeks. Oh, my goodness, yeah, the droughts so and the fires. fires. Yeah, right. So, so the perspective of, of people moving into the outdoors from a recreational perspective is, is huge uh, yeah. because we need to save what we have. And, um, and uh, if, you know, as, as we know from current administration that we have, a lot of people – don't understand the outdoors. And so they're making decisions that aren't uh, sometimes logical yeah. because they don't understand the outdoors. So the more we get people to say, Hey, I understand this. This is part of my life. I'm going to keep this uh, mm-hmm. for my children or you know, future generations. That's what we need in this country and yeah. around the world. Yeah, that's well said. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, it's under, under threat every time we turn the corner, it seems like these days. It does. Um, do you have any daily routines used to keep your sanity? You meditate, you get a lot of exercise, I'm sure. Uh, I do. Uh, right now, it's taking care of my wonderful father. Uh, and, you know, those are things that I love. I think you know, my, my greatest passion in life is creativity. And I've, you know, my, my, I think my greatest joy is painting. So oh, cool. um, that's, you know, I, I try to paint as much as I can. I love to paint with oil and uh, I'm, I'm still consider myself a real hack, but it's something I love. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And uh, and it doesn't matter because it just gives it puts me into that. Yeah, exactly. Place. It's for you. And, that's perfect. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that's my real joy. That's awesome. And how about some favorite books or books you give as gifts or podcasts? Do you have a favorite? Yeah. Book? Well, <laughs> after your podcast, <laughs> one, that's a, one, one of the better ones in the world. Right? Well, thank you so, very much. I appreciate you know, that. <laughs> I, uh, so my, my books in recent have been in Spanish. I'm trying to really. Oh, interesting. Over the years, and, and reading is really helping with that. So. Uh, I read a lot of a lot of Spanish. I read uh, a lot of uh, nonfiction books on uh-huh. all sorts of things, and cool. um, reading a lot of books basically on change right now from a science perspective. So, from a thematic standpoint, those things are really, you know, you know, they kind of they kind of float my boat, so to speak, right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. How about do you have a favorite outdoor gear purchase under a hundred dollars? Here's your here's your chance for a shameless plug. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's not a good Doesn't have sure. to be, I but on. you know. <laughs> no. uh, I think uh, I, I would say you know one, a great outdoor gear purchase. Um, I, I would say it's uh, I, you know, something you I use every day, question. something you never leave home without, something that's always yeah, in your pack. I, yeah, I think. Well, obviously the cameras. I think it kind of mm, gets you yeah, out there. That's good. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, you know, if you can if you can afford a, a great pair of binoculars. It's, it's one gift that I think that once you start using binoculars, you start bringing things in close and looking at details. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And sometimes you kind of, you know, they, they hang by your door and you don't use them very often. But if you keep a pair in a car yep. and you travel with it, 
it's amazing what you can see if you just slow down a little bit mm-hmm. and and look at things uh, from a different perspective. And that's a good close. one. Yeah, that's a good one. I don't yeah. think anybody's mentioned that. That's a really good one. Yeah, I and I don't know that. whether you can get a great pair of binoculars for a hundred bucks, but I know I have a great pair for three hundred dollars. Yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah, you don't need you know really expensive binoculars, but uh, it it I think the the. the key is is that it makes you see the details Mm -hmm. and sometimes up close that sometimes they're just go by the wayside yeah no that's a good one i like that um as we wrap up is there anything else you'd like to say to our listeners or ask of our listeners i think you know more than anything uh as a brand as someone who's the ceo and founder of a company um you know we have a tribe in a sense of the consumer that has embraced our product uh and i'm really proud of all outdoor industries all businesses who are embracing uh, the outside and the, and the people who are working on the sidelines to create the habitat that gives us a, mm-hmm, a, a place mm-hmm. to, to, to be in business for. So all the NGOs and the people who are working on water issues and land issues and keeping our land uh, uh, open and, you know, keeping it public uh, people who create conservation easements, you know, for open space character. I mean, those are the real heroes in our country. And mm. I think as the United States and as being an American, I think one of the greatest values that we have that defines us as Americans is the fact that we have this open space and these open lands. Yeah, it's pretty unique. Um, and and I think that is something I'm so appreciative of. And the people that uh, have embraced our brand, we are so loyal to and so thankful for because uh, they're really the heroes. They're the ones who are really getting out there and, and uh, appreciating these wild places and, and helping us keep them intact. Mm, that's very cool. That's good. And if people want to reach out to you, how can they follow follow you or find you or they want to follow up with questions? Yep. You can follow us on Instagram, uh, uh, you know, Fish Pond USA. You can follow, you know, find us on our website, fishpondusa.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a lot of relevant information. You can read about our recycled uh, fabrics that we're using right now. Oh, you cool. can read about all sorts of different people, you know, our ambassadors who are doing amazing uh, things with our company uh, and other companies, and we help profile that. And so, uh, yeah, tune in on social media and our website. And, mm. um, and we'll link to all that in the show notes. Yeah. So everybody has all those links. Yeah. I'll put those up there. Yeah. Cool. Well, it's been great catching up with you. Thanks for the time. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'll catch you in Colorado next time. Okay, buddy. All right. Thanks. See ya. If you want more of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure to go to the OutdoorBizPodcast.com where you find all the episodes, show notes, and much, much more. Until next time, be sure to make time to get outside.